Good morning, First Baptist Church, Denby. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord together. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Let's hope for Jesus. Let's flash our lights for Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, we're recording live on the campus of First Baptist Church, Denby, here at 3628 Campbell Road in the beautiful city of Newport News. And we're excited this morning to have our first drive-in service. Amen? Come on, let's hop for Jesus one more time. Let's hop for the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Whether you're on the campus this morning or join us by way of Facebook Live or YouTube, we are excited to have you here this morning. And we're excited about what God is going to do in this service. Amen? Amen. We have a power-packed service for you this morning, and we're going to dive right into it. Uh, we're going to have the scripture by Deacon David Smith, prayer by Deaconess D.D. Smith. Then we're going to have the announcements by Deacon Linwood Wright. We're going to have a song by this anointed uh, choir. And then we're going to have the introduction to our speaker. Then we're going to hear a word from on high by none other than the Reverend Dr. Earl C. Johnson. Again, saints, let's dog our horns for Christ. Let's flash our lights in a spirit of expectation. God is going to move this morning. God bless you. Round two. Good morning, First Baptist Denby. We are so glad to be here on the grounds of the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? God bless you. The scripture this morning is going to be coming from Acts the third chapter, verses 1 through 10, and I'll be reading from the King James Version. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked in alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle and bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. This is the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for yet another opportunity to just give him all praise, all honor, all glory, for it is due his name. Father God, I just ask that you all pray with me as I go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, first we come to say thank you, O oh God. Thank you for another day, O oh God. Thank you for your grace, God. Thank you for your mercy, O oh God. Thank you, God, for all the things that you have done for us and continue to do, O oh God. Oh, yeah. We thank you, God, that you kept the enemy away from us on this past week, O oh God. Father God, we thank you for peace of mind that surpasses all understanding, O oh God. 
Thank you for joy unspeakable. Father God, we just thank you right now that you keep us in your care. And Father, as we enter into this season, God, we just ask that you continue to keep us steady, oh God. That we would concentrate on the things of you, God. That we would not be swayed by the things that are going on around us, God. But that we would plant ourselves, oh God. That we might be able to hear what you would have to say to your people, oh God. Father God, I ask right now that you look on all of our children, oh God. As they continue their virtual learning experiences, God. Bring back to their remembrance those things that they were taught, oh God. Help them to excel in your name, oh God. And then, Lord, we ask that you continue to encourage our educators, God. The work that they're doing is noble work, oh God. And we ask, God, that you continue to strengthen them, oh God. Give them the patience, the wisdom, and understanding that they need, oh God. Father God, we ask that you look on every bereaved family right now, God. Give them a sense of comfort in this time, oh God. Every sick and shut in, God, we lift up before you right now, God. Let your will be done for their life, oh God. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. Father God, we look on the leadership, not just of this house, but your leadership everywhere, God. Give us to make the decisions that would bring you glory, oh God. Have us to understand, God, that it's not about us, God, but it's about you, oh God. And Father God, we just thank you right now, God, for the leadership here at First Baptist Church Denby, oh God. Continue to build them up, Lord. Continue to strengthen them, oh God. And Father God, we just give you praise for all the things that you are doing, oh God. We thank you, God, for those things that you're going to continue to do, oh God. Help us to reach for you, oh God, that we might see you, oh God. Father God, our desire is to have more of you. Father God, we ask that you just continue to bless us, oh God. Go before us in this service on today, oh God. Everyone that will minister, God, we ask right now that you give them a special anointing. Father God, we even ask that as your manservant begins to deliver the word on today, God, that you would allow him to speak with power and with boldness and with authority, God. That he will speak with clarity and conviction, oh God. Father God, we ask that even as we prepare to leave this place, God, that we will be equipped to do what you have called us to do in this season, oh God. Father God, help us to remember that we are your hands and your feet, oh God. Some of us may be the only Jesus that others may see, God. Help us to live a life that is pleasing to you, oh God. And Father God, we thank you right now for all things, God. We thank you for even this prayer, oh God. We thank you for continued protection, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that you would find us pleasing in your sight, God. These are all blessings we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Amen, church. Let's take a pause for a second and let's celebrate Jesus. Come on. Amen. We got to get our, our past together. To you at home. It's just a blessing to be in the house of the Lord one more time. We got our first drive-in church service. Give us a few minutes to go ahead and get our iPad together. We want to get everything lined up. Some of you at home probably saw something fall that was our camera. But God is still good, amen? How many of you know God will make a way out of no way? Amen. Even you at home who's not here, just put up a load of hearts and stuff on your Facebook page. Let's celebrate Jesus even more. Again, what we're doing right now is we're getting things set up. Again, if you're here, make sure you have your radio on FM 90.5 so you can hear the service in your car. And that it only works here on our campus. Once you leave, it's not going to work. Um, so we're... Make sure you understand that. Also, I just want to say bathrooms are available if necessary. And we do have envelopes for your tithes and offering. If you would like one that you can drop off to one of the escorts as you get ready to depart. Amen. Okay, we are celebrating the great month of November. I want to say happy birthday to all of those that were born in the last few days between the 9th and the 16th of November, happy birthday to you. We want to continue to say we got a powerful prayer line if you need healing or a blessing or a breakthrough. 
Monday through Fridays at 7 a.m. Please dial 951-981-7368. I say again, please dial 951-981-7368. We want to thank all of those who tune in for our leadership development training that we had on last Tuesday by Pastor Johnson. Wasn't that anointed training? Amen. All right, an opportunity for us to continue to grow. This Monday night we have Bible study for our youth and our high schoolers, grades 5 through 12th grade. Tuesday night, get the daughters of promise out here. Amen. Tuesday night. Amen. Okay, ladies, okay. Okay, daughters of promise. Don't forget Tuesday night, November the 17th. From 6.30 to 8 p.m., we will have Daughters of Promise Thanksgiving Zoom Fellowship. Maybe I can, they'll let me log in as well and see what's going on. And then on Wednesday, we have noonday and evening Bible study. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed myself last Wednesday. It was just powerful. And then this Saturday, we have our FBCD Love in Action from 8 to 11 a.m. We want to thank all of those who signed up. I was just told that we had our max capacity. But you can also come out to receive your communion kit. We, will, we should have our Sunday school books. We do, new, we do have our daily bread. And we might even have some I Love My Church t-shirts. So please come out next Saturday, November the 21st, from 8 to 11 a.m. Also on next Saturday, we'll be going out to feed the homeless. If you're interested in supporting that, please see Deacon Woodard or Sister Faye Barnes. And then on next Tuesday, November the 24th, we'll be preparing meals for our harvest feast. Isn't that a blessing? We are closed, but we're not closed out. First Baptist Church then is still going out making a difference. Okay, we want to just ask you that you continue to pray for Shane Green, um, ask that you continue to pray for Deacon James and Deaconess Edna Wofford, their daughter, and sister, Deaconess Edna Wofford's sister. They're both in Atlanta. Ask that you continue to keep them lifted up in prayer. We also ask that you pray for Alan and Nicole Wesley. Keep them lifted up. Um, pray for Deaconess in training, Linda Coleman. She will have surgery on Tuesday. Um, I didn't mention this last Sunday, but Deacon Mark Dozier had a procedure on his knee. We ask that you continue to keep him lifted in prayer. Uh, right now, I think he's sitting on a chair. He should, he should be. He should be. But we want to thank God for his commitment to Christ. This young man only have one speed, and that's wide open. We also ask that you continue to pray for Brother Nathan Jones. Keep him lifted up in prayer as well. Our condolences go to um, Kelly Ingram for her mother, Amanda Nottingham. That home going service was yesterday. Some of us went up and support the family. We also ask that you pray for um, Janet Britt Harrison. She lost her nephew on November the 11th. Glenn Stevenson. We, church family, we lost one of our faithful servants, Sister Barbara Cofield, on Friday. Funeral arrangements is incomplete. Keep that family lifted up in prayer. Um, Mary Goffrey, she went up on t Thursday to Maryland to bury her uncle. And then her cousin home going service was yesterday in North Carolina. And then we also ask that you pray for Pastor Johnson. He even lost his, he lost his first cousin. And I got a call this morning that Brother Tony Fox is not doing well and his wife is taking him to the emergency room. Keep him lifted up in prayer. And church family, let's just pray for all our sick and shut in, those who have lost loved ones, our pastoral search committee, all our young people, our young adults, and our adults that are in high school. And let's even pray for what's going on in America with voting. How many of you know God can answer prayer? Amen, 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 amen. Again, like I said earlier, we do have envelopes if you want to give your tithes and offering. As you depart, we can pick those up from our escorts. At this time, I would ask that you bow your heads for a moment of prayer. We pray over the offering. 
Lord, we just want to thank you for being a great God and a great God to serve. Lord, bless those who gave. Lord, bless those who wanted to give but didn't have it at this time. Continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to allow us to do your will and do it your way. Now, Lord, just go with us as we go forward in this service. It's in your son Jesus' name I do pray and say amen. So, we got a powerful man of God that's coming forth. He needs no introduction. I just can't wait. If you love Jesus, blow your horn just one more time. Amen. There we go. Bless the Lord, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not the young adult choir. Young adult choir, you out there, let me hear you. There they go. I praise God. It won't be long when Jesus say, come on out of time out. When God say that it's over, we can come on back together. Then y'all get the young adults, but I'm on try and bless your spirits with a song <clears throat> that uh, God laid on my heart. I sing it around the house from time to time, and it's a hymn. Amen. Those of you out there in Facebook land, if you have your hymn books at home, this is hymn number 202. Amen. It's entitled, I Know who holds tomorrow. Amen. 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 Y'all pray with me. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine. For its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry o'er the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside him, for I know. I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who watches me. And the path that be my portion may be through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me, and I'm covered in his blood. Many things about Amen. Come on, praise the Lord, church. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. I tell you, the devil is busy this morning. So I want you to honk your horn and tell the devil it ain't going to work. Tell the devil it ain't going to work. 
It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. Whatever, whatever he's trying to do this morning to sabotage, just tell him it ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. Because the Lord is present in this place. The Lord is here. Yes, he to make is. sure the devil doesn't have any say. Amen. Amen. Glad to be here this morning. What a wonderful place. What a wonderful platform. I just telling somebody I can preach out here every Sunday. We don't need to go inside anymore, hey? <laughs> hey, man, what a joy it is to see so many of you here, honking your horns and loving the Lord and being here for this first time in the parking lot of uh, First Baptist Denby. I'm so happy that this day was able to come and the Lord has blessed us with such wonderful weather. But i also like to thank those who prepared this before I get started. And uh, give the AV people and uh, all the trustees and deacons that made all of this possible, amen. Amen. What a job. What a job. Thank you, guys. Amen. And uh, I, had to, I had to tell uh, Minister Perkins that he can't be out dressing me, right? So he, <laughs> he, he's dressed down to the nine today, man. <laughs> but um, I thank you all again, and I uh, won't prolong you. And uh, like I said, we had some technical difficulties, so I'm getting up a little later than usual. But that's okay, because the Lord is still going to work. Amen. Amen. Come on, tell somebody, the Lord doesn't have a time frame on his word. Amen. 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 Uh, your scripture has already been read for you, Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. It's already been done. And uh, I'd certainly like to thank uh, Brother Smith, wonderful reading of the text, and his wife for such a lovely prayer, too, as well. Amen. Uh, but Acts 3, verses 1 through 10 has already been read for you. So I'm just going to pull a note from... Acts uh, verses 8 and 9. That's chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. And combined, the two, the two scriptures really says that after the lame man was healed, he walked into the temple with Peter and John. And he was leaping and praising God all the way. So I want to talk for a few moments on the subject. It's shouting time. It's shouting time. Come on, hug your horns. It's shouting time. Amen. Let's get to it. Amen. Because all of us know that Jesus has an impressive resume. He's born of a virgin, living a sinless life. That's impressive. Being able to heal the sick, clothe the naked, preach the good news about God's plan for humanity. That's very, very impressive. And we also know impressive resumes can do. We have an unwritten um, an unwritten rule about how resumes should be prepared and how they should go out. But any employee who's hiring or hiring someone knows a great resume is not enough. The resume is a start, but it is not the entire story. It can show us where a person went to school, it can show us their work experience, tell us their age. It can give a snapshot about their knowledge, skills, and abilities. But it doesn't tell us everything. So the employer will ask for references to go along with the resume. Because the references give a different picture of what is written on paper. The references tell the employer what other people think about the applicant. The other people can verify if what is on the resume is true. And at some point, they want an interview with you to meet face to face. And I say that to say that Jesus has a great resume. 
And there are plenty of people who can verify or witness to this greatness. But the best kind of resume, the best kind of information we can say about Jesus is about our own personal relationship with him. We've had our own interview with Jesus. We've talked with him. We've walked with him. We've experienced things with him. He lifts us and keeps us and holds us in the palm of his hand. We can be an eyewitness because we have experienced what it's like to be with Jesus. Why don't you honk your horn if you know what I'm talking about? Amen. We have that personal relationship with him, and we can declare that Jesus is everything he said he is, right? He's everything he said he was going to be, and he can do everything that he says he would do. He's never broken a promise. So having a personal relationship with Jesus kind of gives us bragging rights. That's what I have to tell people sometimes. You know, we got bragging rights because we got a God on our side who protects us and is always with us. And so this kind of witnessing, this kind of relationship, this kind of uh, relation phenomenon between Peter and John and Jesus is what got these two men started in the ministry. What happened to them is what also happens to us in the things that we do. They were so mesmerized and magnetized and captivated by the encounter with Christ's event that they had to go out and spread the word of the Lord. Mind you, though, that both men had their own lives reshaped and reimaged by the Christ event. Peter was everybody's punching bag. We all know Peter, right? Because sometimes we all Peter out, right? We all know Peter. He was considered to be impulsive and ambitious and self-assertive and quick to speak out on things that he knew nothing about. He was hot-tempered, like some of us, used vulgar language. He was witty, and he was a great uh, person of great survival skills. And he was unafraid to go to bed for his friends. <clears throat> and we all like to have a friend like Peter, who on one occasion, while they were trying to capture Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, Peter used a blade and cut off the ear of one of the soldiers. All of us like to have a Peter in our corner, somebody who would stand up with us, somebody who would speak out for us, somebody who would help us in times of need, a friend who sticks closer than a brother. In fact, Peter's name meant stone, which says a whole lot about his behavior. His life was a mess <clears throat> until his encounter with Jesus. And I'm just wondering if anybody's out here can, can identify with the Peters of the world. Our lives were a mess. A great mess before we met the Lord. We went through all kinds of stuff before we met the Lord, but somehow our relationship with God made life so much easier. We're out here today in our fine cars, living in good houses, got money in our pockets, and we can go anywhere we want to go only because of the Christ event, only because of Jesus Christ in our lives, only because of the blood that was shared on Calvary Cross for the remission of our sins. He's alive and alive forevermore. And so, and so, that's Peter. <coughs> and that's how Peter would operate, understanding the great redemption story of Jesus Christ. John, on the other hand, was of a different character. <coughs> John was quite different than Peter. <coughs> when you compare the two, you have a much different story. John the Apostle is not the same as John the Baptist. Let's not confuse the two. Apostle John wrote much of the New Testament. The book of John, Revelation, he wrote, and he believed in the new Christian movement that was taking place. That he was so far moved by the presence of Jesus that John would do anything to keep the movement going. Let me say that again since I kind of messed that up. Amen, somebody. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the comparison contrast is between John and Peter. Peter 
was a lot different than John. I mean, John was a lot different than Peter. And so John the Apostle helped write much of the New Testament. He wrote the book of John and he wrote the book of Revelation. And he believed in a new movement that was started by the Christ event. In his life, he wanted to show that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah. But he, 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 he was no lightweight at the same time because, don't forget, he had a brother named John. And they were called the sons of Zebedee. And, and some people called them the sons of thunder. They were some bad boys. I mean, you didn't want to run up on them. They were hood boys. Amen. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, they, they didn't take any mess. Peter pulled out a blade, but John wasn't no lightweight. The sons of thunder were some bad boys. They told Jesus on one occasion, said, the people are mistreating you, Lord. You think we should pray and call down fire and consume them all? That's the attitude of John. So Peter and John... <coughs> Right, let's get that together. So Peter and John's life had been shaped by being a disciple of Jesus and their encounter with him. And as they sought to expand their evangelistic territory, they were moving away from the religious activities of their time. They were shifting away from Judaism to what they call people of the way, to the new movement with Jesus Christ. The Bible said that they went up to the temple at the ninth hour, or the hour of prayer, and it was the ninth hour. There's several things to note here that it didn't say that they went up to pray. It said they went up at the ninth hour. So they went up to the temple at the ninth hour, or the hour of prayer, but not so much to pray. And so my thinking on this is that they went there to determine how much of an opportunity they would have to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so sometimes they didn't want to go to get into the prayer per se, but they wanted to look for opportunities to evangelize and to spread the word of God. And that's what we have to do sometimes. We can't always go to the meeting just to be at the meeting, but sometimes we need to go to look for opportunities to be able to tell somebody about the Christ event. Sometimes we need to go and let somebody know that Jesus is Lord, that he's the Alpha and the Omega, that he's still a bridge over troubled waters. We need to let somebody know that God is still reigning, that he's still alive. We need to let them know that because there's so many people now who are missing out on the gospel event because we are not doing our part in being a witness. Amen. Peter and John look for opportunities to spread the word. They were looking for a way to get the message out about the Lord, the life, death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. And so they wanted to sow seeds of opportunities for people to get to know and understand the Lord. They went up to the hour, to the tip of the hour of prayer, according to the Jewish tradition, but also to signify that there was no time set by God for people to pray. Amen. Let me say that again so you won't misinterpret what I'm saying. Amen. In the Jewish tradition, they were taught to pray three times a day, morning, noon, evening. Peter and John, based on their relationship with the Christ event, with Jesus Christ, were trying to break that mold. <clears throat> they come to tell them there's no set time to pray or no direction. Whether you pray in the east, west, north, or south, it did not matter as long as you pray to God. Amen. God's prayer doesn't have a time frame. It doesn't have a limit on it. You can pray any time, any day. Amen. And the Bible tells us what? We should pray always. Amen. We should never stop praying because it is something that we should always do. Amen. 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 You're and helping so, us. And so, and so prayer does not have a timeline. God is to be worshipped and glorified and prayed unto as often as we can. Come on, let me get a shout out on that somewhere. Yeah. Keep up with them. Amen. You helping us. Amen. 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 My throat is going to get right in a minute. Amen. Amen. I feel my hip coming. Amen. So, and so they went up for that purpose, and our prayer should always be given whenever we can. Another thing to note is that the ninth hour here is about 3 o'clock in the evening. 
the Jewish day was divided into 12 equal parts, as I just mentioned. So nine was in the afternoon, was in the um, noonday. It was a triumphal moment for Christianity as it spread throughout the Greco Roman world. Times were changing. No longer would there be one dominant religion or a central idea or central thought. The age of individual thought and idealism was emerging. Alternative realities gave people something to look forward to. It was prophecy fulfilled as recorded in the book of Joel when Joel said that the Lord said, and it shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men shall see dreams. Young men shall see visions. And there should be wonders and signs in the heavens and earth above. That's a prophecy of joy. And this is what is taking place with the ministry of Jesus Christ and what John and Peter and so many others were able to see during first century Christianity. Peter and John were conduits of God's word and they committed to the cause, or were committed to the cause of the gospel. And as they ministered, they preached, they worked as a team. <clears throat> they were not afraid to declare what they had witnessed and what was going on in their individual lives. They preached the word unto them. And the need for the word to be preached was indeed in need. That is how their faithfulness increases. It's how our faithfulness increases. The Bible says faith comes by hearing uh -huh. and hearing the word of God. That's why I tell people you need to come to church so you can hear or get on the radio, get on Facebook, get somewhere so you can hear the word of God. That's how your faith increases. You got to hear the word. You got to hear it. So God has, God has given us the word for us to hear so that our faith will not falter. And that's why sometimes our faith falter because we don't, we don't hear enough of the word of God. We need to hear somebody say, I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. We need to hear him say, I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. We need to hear the word of God in his foremost. We need to hear it everywhere, from churches and, and corners and everywhere we go. Somebody needs to be proclaiming the word of the living God. Yeah. Somebody once said that, that, that they like a certain church because the preacher was a good teacher. And I said to myself, well, that is the problem with a lot of preachers today. They want to teach. They want to do everything but preach. But preaching is what they have been called to do. Why don't you do what you've been called to do? Teaching is good. It's a byproduct. But it's not the real thing. It's the French benefits. I mean, you don't go into the Army or the Navy or the Air Force and tell them that, hey, I just came in to get the benefits, but I don't want to go to war. No, going to war is primary, and the benefits is something that's secondary. It's the same way with preaching. It's the same way with our love for God. We have to do what? We, we teach, right? But that's a byproduct. It's the French benefit. But the real thing is that we proclaim the life and the death and the burial of Jesus Christ, who is the cornerstone of everything that we do. The main task of the preacher is to preach. That's it. The main task of the preacher is to preach. And what does the preacher do? Preaching changes mind. It opens closed heart. Men's broken ones. It gives us something to look forward to. It gives us hope for a brighter day. It puts joy in our soul. Praise in our mouth. Shouting in our feet. It causes us to forget about the cares of this world. Preaching kind of changes and challenges us. Preaching glorifies God. Preaching acts as a witness for Jesus. Preaching, it humbles us, diminishes our pride, renews our soul, satisfies our spirit, softens our heart, heals our hurt, vanishes our wounds, it equips the saints, it cures our loneliness. Amen. That's what preaching does, and that's what Peter and John did, and they had no apologies about it. Amen, amen. We amen. need to stop apologizing amen. for being who we are. We need to stop apologizing for people who are Christian and those who love the Lord. We need to stop being apologetics and stop saying, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. We need to stop telling folks, yeah, I'm a Christian and a so forth, but let them know that I am a child of God.
Amen. He's brought me a long way. And I ain't scared. I'm not afraid to tell somebody how much I love the Lord. Amen. If you love him, hook your horn. Let somebody know you love him today. Amen. Paul tells the young Timothy, what does he tell Timothy in the book of Timothy? He said, preach the word. Preach it when? In season and out of season. And right now, we're out of season. This is not the season that God has prepared for us. We're out of season. They said we need to preach the word until we get back in the season that God has in store for us. All of our lives have been turned upside down. We're out of season, but guess what? God is always in season. And when God is in season, we can always get the benefit and the blessing that God has in store for us. Preach, Timothy. Preach when they hear the word and when they don't want to hear the word. Preach, preach, Tim, Timothy. Preach it until the sick are healed, the lame walk, the economy gets better. Preach until jobs are gained, until coronavirus is wiped off the face of the earth. Preach until dreams are realized, until people learn to love and not hate. Preach it, preach it until everybody recognizes that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Hallelujah. So, so, as we approach the end, as I get ready to land the plane, park the car, bring the boat to dock, as these men approach the temple, talking about Peter and John, they encountered a man who the Bible says was crippled from birth. Now, I know y'all look over that fact. He said he was crippled from birth. So why does the text give us that little bit of detail? It tells us that because if he wasn't crippled from birth, there was a possibility that modern medicine could have healed him. Y'all, 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 y'all missed the shout. Y'all missed the uh -huh. horn. Uh -huh. that, 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 it, 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 it did not say that he was born from birth. There was a possibility that a pill could help him that they had some kind of miracle pill somewhere hiding out that they could give him and heal him. Or they had some, some kind of fancy medicine or some doctors who could heal him of his disease. But by his being born from birth, it lets us know that only Jesus Christ, that only God could heal him. Are you with me? If you got to say amen, amen. And like so many people in this world, the man was dealing with a long-term illness. He was relegated to that of a beggar because of his position. It was first century poverty and the way they looked down on people who didn't have what they ought to have and what God wanted them to have. Instead of taking the man into the church and helping, helping him and taking up a love offering and doing something for him, they put him at the gate so he could beg every day. He was placed at the door just to beg and ask for money. He could not run. He never experienced what it was like to walk. He never knew what it was like to have a job. Never knew what it was like to be independent. He was crippled because not of anything he had done or not because of some kind of curse from God. Like many people in the world, it was a long-term illness with no human cure. He was relegated to the life that people wanted him to live. He was placed at the gate called beautiful. How about that? One of nine gates around the temple. One of them was called Beautiful. It was a beautiful temple with an ugly situation. Anybody can identify with that? You walk, you walk into some of the most beautiful places in the world, but the attitudes of the people who are in there are so rotten. You want to turn around and take your money somewhere else. Anybody know? Can anybody identify? We walk into beautiful edifices and beautiful churches and, and beautiful places, and there are people who can't help us do anything. And this is the case here. It is a beautiful temple with an ugly situation. And check this out. The reason why they placed him at the gate called Beautiful was because the people who was coming through the gate called Beautiful were the rich people. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. He, he got on the side, he was a Gentile like us, he wasn't Jewish. So he got on the side of the Jewish side where the money was flowing in and coming in, he got where the money was. 
And that's where they placed him at. They didn't put him on the other end where his Gentile friends were, where his family members were, where those who said they loved him were. They didn't put him over there, but they put him on another side where people didn't know or care about him, but they were flipping a little bit more money. He was placed there as a result of that. Isn't it amazing, my brothers and sisters, how he relied upon the support of strangers, of other people, instead of relying on the support of his own family and those of his own culture. Isn't it funny that people in your own circle are the ones who claim they love you the most, but they're also the ones that won't come to your rescue when you need them the most. Somebody know what I'm talking about out here. Ain't it funny, ain't it mighty, mighty peculiar that they can talk a good game about helping you and releasing you and doing things for you. But when time comes for them to walk the walk, they can't talk what they can't walk what they talk. Am I right about it? And we know people like that all the time. And so sometimes they're quick to place your feet at the feet of other people, but never reach out to do anything themselves. It's ugliness in the midst of beauty. And here People just step over this crippled man as he sat in front of the gate. They just passed by him. Some had to step over, and they just stepped over him. And I ask you today, who are the people that we're stepping over in our own Christian walk? Who are the people that we're, that we're just stepping over in every phase of the things that we do? Are we stepping over? Who are we stepping over today? And matter of fact, who are you stepping over in your life today? We're stepping over the Breonna Taylors of the world. The Tamil Rice's of the world, the Auburn Avery's of the world. We're stepping over people who are hurting from this failed economy. We're stepping over the poor. We're stepping over the marginalized. We're stepping over the brokenhearted. We're stepping over those who are hurting from this dangerous virus. We're stepping over our constitutional rights. We're stepping over what makes us human. We're stepping over 78 million people who elected Joseph Biden to be president of these United States. We're stepping over our democracy. We're stepping over people and institutions. We just keep on stepping. Well, nobody wants to seem to stop and ask the simple question, what can I do to help you? Like this man and his condition been placed at the gate and been stepped on. We're doing the same thing in our own lives. And so sometimes we have to stop and take a back seat and ask ourselves, who are we stepping over today? Who'd you leave at home? The text presents us with an ugly situation, but the outcome was beautiful. <laughs> Y'all you be tuning your horn on that. It, it started off ugly, but the outcome was beautiful. On this same day, something happened to change this man for, for the rest of his life. Something happened that caused the writer of this gospel to put this story in the Bible and let it live on until eternity. Something happened to this man on that day. It's like the change that you and I received when we first met the Lord. It's like the change we got that happened to us when we first walked and walked down the aisle in some church or, or some place and, and said, what must I do in order to be saved? It's the same scenario when God turned our life around from, from drinking or smoking or whatever it is that we were doing. It's the same scenario that we changed and our lives have been changed forevermore. And that made him a believer and something that brought hope to a broken religious system. The people around him who saw that what he was doing and what God did kind of changed their mind and started asking the question, who is this Christ? It allowed the outsider to become insiders and insiders to become outsiders. In other words, those on the outside will start going in, and some of those on the inside will start going out. It's a new beginning. It's a fresh approach. So as they approached the crippled man, that Peter looked on him. He looked on them with expectations that they were going to receive something. He was going to receive some money or something. He thought Peter and John were part of uh, the well-to-do crowd. He thought they were two preachers who had a yacht who had jet airplanes, who had helicopters, who had golden toilet seats. He thought they were preachers that had million dollar bank accounts. He thought that they had everything that he didn't have. He thought that they had plenty 
of money. But the truth be told here is that they were two broke preachers. And they had nothing but a hoop and a holler. They had no money to give. They didn't have any luxury items to give. They didn't have anything to take to goodwill to give away. They had nothing. Two broke preachers with no money preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And sometimes we miss out on that. We think preachers ought to have a lot of money, have a lot of wealth, have the best cars, have the finest, this, finest, that. Jesus walked through Palestine, walked through Palestine. I didn't say road. He walked through Palestine for three years with nothing but a pair of sandals on his feet, ate at other people's homes, drank wine from other people. He had nothing on earth. And so where do we get this idea from the preachers ought to have all of the stuff to proclaim the gospel? They had nothing, two broke preachers. Peter said, look at me. I don't have anything. Look on me. Do you see wealth? Do I look flashy? Do I have anything that you think I have? He said, look on me. He said, silver and gold, I don't have. But what I have, I give. Silver and gold, I don't have. I don't have the finest things in life. I don't have luxury. I don't have 501K. I don't have a savings account. In fact, I have nothing that you think I ought to have. And there was a time, my brothers and sisters, when the church could say that it did not have silver and gold. Yes. There was a day when the church didn't have as fancy stuff that it has now. There was a day when the church could say, silver and gold, we don't have, but what we have, we give you. Amen. You're helping us. But the church can't do that now. Amen. You're helping us. We got too much silver and gold. We got so much silver and gold now that we can't say arise and walk. And somehow the silver and gold has blinded us from the healing power of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to get Amen. back to the basis. We need to get back to the basis and start proclaiming that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. Arise and walk. Amen. You're helping us. But money was not what the man needed. He thought he needed money, but he didn't need money. He needed salvation for his soul. Peter said, we have no silver and gold, but what I have, I give. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and walk. We don't have money, but we offer you a crucified Christ. We don't have money. But we offer you a Christ who cares, who loves us. We offer you a Savior of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, arise and walk. Yeah. Notice, notice, he said, in the name of Jesus, and not in some other name. In the name of Jesus. That's why when we pray, we ought to end that prayer with what? In the name of Jesus to signify and to glorify and to put our step on who is going to deliver this prayer, who is going to answer the prayer in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Notice, notice that they, they didn't put any oil on him. They didn't shine him up like it looked. It said it looked like a grease monkey. They didn't pray and turn him around three times to be healed. They didn't speak in tongues. They didn't ask for the little money that he had in his jaw. They said, in the name of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the form of liberation theology is a revolutionary outbreak. Because, let me tell you this, in the Roman Greco world, in that world, only one name could be spoken out loud when it comes to kings and things of that nature. And that name was Caesar. You could not declare anybody else's name because Caesar, Caesar had declared himself a god. And so, and so there was a break here and, and, and somebody had to understand that Caesar was not a god. And that's what Paul, Peter and John was trying to tell them that there was another, there's a god who's above all little gods, the big god with the big G and not a god with a little G. So they kind of broke rank and told them the Roman Empire is not ruled by Caesar. It's ruled by God Almighty. So there's power in the name of Jesus. Yes, it is. And I'm, I'm really getting ready to park the car. 
power in the name of Jesus and the essence of what, who they were and the power they had toward Jesus' name. I heard another preacher say recently that names have uh, an effect on our neurological system. So when you say certain names, it sends neurological impulses to the brain and releases cortisol into the body. Cortisol causes stress and causes dysfunction in your immune system and decreases in the white blood system and you cannot fight off the infections that invade your body, which gives a new meaning to the word, you make me sick. Come on, you, you hit your horn on that. Amen. There are certain words in names that will literally make you sick when you pronounce them. Yep. But there are some names that you can call on that goes into the ear canal, sends impulses to the brain, releases something called endorphins, which causes increases in the number of blood of white cells in the body and strengthens your immune system. The difference between cortisol and endorphins is that there's one name, there's one name that will give you more endorphins when it is released into the system. And if you call on that name, y'all don't hear yes, me. Yes, yes, yes. If you call on that name, yes, if yes. you call the name you of Jesus, yes, you Jesus. will feel better. Jesus. It'll make you feel better and not sick. Jesus. If you call on his name, Jesus. he'll make a way for you. Jesus. If you call on him, Jesus. he'll get the job done. If you call on him, yes. he'll fix it for you. Won't he do it, somebody? Won't he do it? If you call on his name, you Jesus. won't get sick, but you get well. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. He can heal you. Every tongue will confess and every knee shall bow that Jesus Christ is glory to God. Hallelujah. And it was in the ninth hour. And it came in the ninth hour. And I come by to tell somebody that if you call on that name in your ninth hour, Things could rapidly increase. I call on somebody to tell you it's your ninth hour and don't give up. The ninth hour is your breakthrough moment. The ninth hour is when God looks into your situation and say, arise and walk. The ninth hour is your day to say it's over and no more. The ninth hour is your healing hour. The ninth hour is where your season is. It's your time for renewal. It's every change should be broken that holds you back. It's your ninth hour. The ninth hour is the time of your blessing. It's when God decides to turn things around in your life. The ninth hour is a time of great possibility. It's an invitation to trust God. It's when mercy shows up, when hate takes a back seat to love. The ninth hour is a time when you need to get up and reclaim your purpose and your destiny. The ninth hour is upon you right now. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. You are in the ninth hour of your life. And the Bible said at the end, when all was said and done, that the man stood up on the word of God. He got up and he began to walk. His ankle bones got strong and he walked behind Peter and John. And he walked into the church. At first he was walking. And then the word said, he started to leap. Leap. Yes. Hallelujah. Leap and jump. Yeah. Leap. Leap. Yeah. And jump. Jump. I need 15 people to start leaping and jumping with me. Leap and jump because the Lord has made a way. And if God has done something for you, it's shouting time. It's time to shout it out. It's time to rejoice. It's time to move on with the word of God. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Glory. Glory Hallelujah. to the God of our salvation. Yes. Ain't he all right? Yes, he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. See, y'all didn't y'all get that leaping right. I, I need y'all to get out to your car. See, y'all didn't even get out the car. Y'all should have been out the car. 
Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your mask on and just get out. And do a little leaping. Hallelujah. And praising. Yeah. And shouting. And giving God the glory for the victory he performed in your life. He's a God that can never fail. A God that can do everything. A God is a God of all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the people. We thank you for this moment, God, to be here today. Amen. We thank God. Let's give him another hand clap. Give another shout out. We're going to open up the doors of the church. You may have somebody in your car, somebody with you, who has not experienced the Christ event, such as Peter and John, and so many of us who are out here today. We all have an experience we can look back on. We got a resume that we can show others about what we've been, what we've done. But we also need a witness. And there's a great cloud of witnesses who are looking down on us, who can testify about our goodness and how good God has been to us. You don't have the testimony, it can be your hour, it can be your time. It can be your time. If you want special prayer today, let's do that. If you want that, just stand outside the car and we'll pray for all those who are here. You just tell God to your own self you need. Somebody you want to pray for, just call the name out. We'll do that right now. We'll, we'll, lift, we'll lift that name up in prayer right now. Amen. Because we serve a real God, folks. The message I was bringing to you today is that God never fails. People will fail you and they'll let you down. They'll forget about you. But God never fails. He'll make a way for you. The biggest letdown is when people never see your gifts and never witness what God is doing in your life. Hallelujah. When they overstep the things that God is doing in your life, when they overlook the promises that God has made to you, yeah. that's one of life's great disappointments. Like right, somebody tells somebody it's your ninth hour, it's here, it's upon you, but God will shake things up for you and make a way for you. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the many men and women who are standing and asking for prayer, either for themselves or their families, yes, yes. friends, whatever the case may be. Yes. We know your healing power. Hallelujah. That you have the ability to do all things, things we can never think possible. The word says that a day with you is like a thousand years. We thank you for addressing our needs being there when we need you the most, for letting us know that you never leave us nor forsake us. God, you know we've had some tough times. Things have not always been good in this 2020. We've lost some friends, we've lost loved ones. We've lost so much this year. It doesn't seem like the world is friendly anymore, that there's more hate than love, that we just can't seem to put it all together. But we know, God, if we can call on that name, that name that is above every name, that name who is the propitiation of all of our care, that name that makes a difference in all world affairs, that our individual hurts and our brokenness. So we can call that name. We know, God, that you'll be there for us. We can rely on you. We can be, you'll be there for us in the midst of our trials and tribulations, in the midst of our disputes and despairs, in the midst of the things that, that's shaking and rattling our homes and our, on our jobs and, and everywhere else in our lives. We know that you can make a way to, we know that you can fix it, God. But we gotta call on that name first. We gotta call on you, Lord, and let you know. Because your word says you already know what we need. But you want us to recognize that we need it. And we recognize that we need it by letting you know that we need your help in doing what we ourselves cannot do. So God, we pray that for your hand of mercy and your grace 
and all the wonderful blessings that you have to bestow upon the people who are standing here, people on Facebook, the people in this church, the Church Baptist Denby, as you continue to march us forward in spite of the things, the appalling things that we see and face every day. Somebody here might be standing for somebody who's experiencing some sickness. Somebody might, might be looking for someone who's going through some psychological trauma. Maybe somebody's having their neurological system messed up. But we come to ask you, God, first of all, forgive us of our sins, and then to heal our bodies right now. Touch us, Lord, in a mighty way. Touch those that somebody's standing in line for, somebody's praying for right now. Touch them, Lord. Let them know that, that, that you're able to make a way out of no way. Let them know that you're there. You're a healer and a way maker. God, we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, and all the glory for the great things that you have done. This is our prayer in the blessed name of Jesus. And let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. Come on, put those hands together. Put those horns together. Give God some praise. Amen, church. Let's blow our horns and flash our lights and just thank God one more time for Pastor Christ. Amen. Amen. Once again, we just want to, once again, we just want to thank everybody for coming out. Now listen, please follow our escorts. They're going to lead you out. Please just don't drive off on your own. Please, church family. We got a plan. We got a plan. Just follow the escorts and they're going to tell you where to go. We're going to send people to the right and then we're going to send people around the building. Please follow instructions. Until next Sunday. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. May God continue to bless you. Amen. Amen.